When did they get here? About three days ago. They evacuated everyone, declared a state of emergency, and set up camp at the Tiki Temple ruins. Rumor has it there was some deadly virus running rampant, but I think the soldiers are being paid off by real estate speculators. They'll end up developing the island into a huge golf course for bored old money bags, like my ex. Are you talking about Charlie? No, I meant Renaco, an African millionaire who had petroleum coming out of his diamond-studded ears. Do you know the man in charge of the troops? The colonel? Yeah, he looks a lot like my ex, but with half the looks and twice the wrinkles. And he doesn't have that hot criminal look, of course. Your ex-boyfriend, Brian? No, Milo, a kid from Central Europe or somewhere around there. I didn't know you liked older men. It's not that I have anything for them. The only difference is on the surface, really. Inside, all men are equally childish, no matter what their age. But don't worry, most of us women like children. I don't like talking about that guy. Don't look at me. You're the one who brought him up. Military men for me. I'm changing the subject. Well, my ex-boyfriend was a military thug, and he really made me laugh. Mikhail? No, Tiru. A hilarious sergeant from India. Let's talk about something else. All right. If that's the best you can come up with. It doesn't seem like you have much work. Well, before the military got here, my boss didn't give me a moment of Tropical Island peace. Wait on the bar. Go down to the storeroom. Clean up the photo stand. Shoo those lemurs off the bucking bronco. Put on a skimpier outfit. What was it you said about a bunch of lemurs? I know it sounds weird, but a few years ago, a Japanese bolt full of giant lemurs sunk nearby. It was headed for New York. Anyway, the lemurs swam to shore and took over the beach. You can't imagine what leshes they were. If I turned my back for a second, they'd rip off all the booze. They were bombed day and night, destroying everything they got their little prehensile paws on, until we managed to run them into the jungle on the other side of the island. Well, I suppose this bar isn't exactly the workplace of your dreams, is it? Don't be so sure. I've had worse jobs. I even worked in Hollywood as a makeup artist. It sounds all glamorous at first, but when you have to turn 3,000 midgets into extraterrestrials, all the glitz and bling bling starts to fade. Oh. Doing movie makeup must be a hard job. Not really. Maybe it used to be, but ever since they came out with Grease Paint Pro, you can make your grandma look like a star, as the slogan says. What is that Grease Paint Pro thing? It's the computer software we movie makeup artists use. You can scan a picture of the character you want to create, another of the person you're making over, and in a few seconds, it gives you a range of makeup options. Along with the list of the products you'll need, the features you should accentuate or cover up, to put it simply, it's a very expensive wonder program that only big production companies can afford. But with Grease Paint Pro alone, it's not enough, is it? I bet it's useless without your talent. They're all essential. The computer, the talent, the scanner, the printer, and of course, the makeup products. I don't mean to brag, but I have them all. The great thing about having a computer geek as a boyfriend is that he can set up a home machine for you that's better than the ones most professionals use. I don't mean to butt into your business, but are you talking about Mikhail? No, Koji-san, this guy from Tokyo. Uh, what were we chatting about? All you men are the same. You're so busy looking at our cleavage, you can't pay attention to what we're saying. So it makes no difference. We can talk about whatever you wish. Did you work on any famous films? I wouldn't know. I never go to the movies. I mainly worked in horror movies until I met this director. We started going out, and he hired me to do three movies all at the same time. You don't say. I bet his name was Andy. Or maybe it was Larry. You're a really bad guesser. Anyway, his name was Peter. 
He made films in Australia, or did something down under. You don't look like a makeup artist. Or a waitress, for that matter. <laughs> hmm. I'm not sure if I want to know what you see me as. I'm gonna take a stroll. See ya later on. See you around. It's full of sand, ash, cigarette butts, and that looks like a cigar holder. I bet I can find some use for that. If I remember right, that's the brand Kordsmeyer smokes. Special cocktails for $5. Sure, why not? Look, Lonnie, could I borrow your chalkboard? Go ahead. Nobody's ordering any cocktails around here anymore. It comes with chalk, too. Yeah, I'll keep inspecting the island. I'll try to find that cove Loki Lani told me about. Maybe her friends can help me out. Well, unless I'm lost, this must be them. And I'm willing to bet the guy with the surfboard is Knife. I'm gonna go check it out. Hey, you're Knife, right? Sure am, Mike. Have we met? Actually, I haven't. But I've heard about you. Gnarly, mate. My fame back at the University of California remains. I'm not surprised, though. After so many years trying to finish school, even the professors know me. No. Loki Lani's the one who mentioned you. Loki Lani's one hot babe, eh? She's like totally for my bones, mate. But don't tell Kai or he'll go aggro. Okay. Hey, I haven't introduced myself. My name is... I heard that, bro. You just told Brian that Loki Lani thinks you're the kind. And no one's gonna swallow that, bro. He is, like, totally full of himself sometimes. He thinks the fact that some shark chowed down on his paw is enough to impress a Betty like... Wait, what did Lokalani say about me? Not much. She just said you're crazy about surfing. How could I not? I was born in Byron Bay. Where? Byron Bay, in Australia, mate. The place with the bitchinest airs on the planet, buddy boy. Thing is, when I was a kid, I didn't like surfing. I was all into underwater diving. California's where I got all hyped on surfing, but crikey, over there in Cali, it's majorly packed. You know you gotta reserve a wave at least two days in advance? No, I didn't. Hard to believe. I'm telling you, and don't think that means you get to ride it alone. Nah, -uh, they rent it out to so many mates at once, you feel like you're surfing in a public toilet. So, of course you decided to come here for the peace and quiet. For Kai, too. When I was a freshman in surfing sciences, I saw him do a demo in a video. And it was so gnarly that I dropped out of college to become a student. Kai rules, mate. People say he's a bum just because he spends 16 hours a day resting. But all the masters have to meditate. I guess that video was recorded before he lost his leg, right? Negative, mate. The most awesome thing is that his mastery's greater with that iron leg than most people with... Hey, you're not trying to get him to give you classes, are you? Don't worry. Surfing's not my thing. You're not into surfing? Whoa, what's up with that? I knew there were some freaks out there, but... So, what brings you to Mala, then? Before, you said you studied surfing at the university. Full on, Mike. Since people spent all day on the beach and the classrooms were empty, the uni decided to dream up some more interesting majors and the students were majorly stoked. It was mythical, Mike. I, for instance, signed up for 14 different majors. From skating sciences to applied Tai Chi, plus adventure sports theory and practicum and California punk aesthetics. I didn't go to class much, but it was cool to say your major was one of those rad subjects. Loki Lani told me you have a motorboat. Loki Lani's a sweet babe, ain't she? So what about the motorboat? Could I borrow your motorboat? My regrets, mate. If those army thugs catch you, they'll rough you up and leave me boatless. 
And forget looking for waves, cars, classes, and everything surfing means. Plus, just this morning I tuned it up, and I don't want you screwing it up. What does everything surfing means stand for, if I may ask? Mate, surfing is a philosophy of life. On the one hand, it forces you to let yourself get carried away by the currents of nature. And on the other, it makes you control the situation so you won't wipe out. To achieve that, which is the essence of surfing, you just need two things. Balance and foresight. Three days, mate. Three days without riding a wave. Is surfing your only pastime? No, nah, mate. Normally, I work as a tourist guide. I take them down to get all stoked over the lake, the falls, the temple, and fishing, but right now, I'm on a required vacation. And not a single pathetic wave to ride. Don't you take him to Lokilani's bar? That Lokilani's a hot babe. Fair dinkum, eh? Of course I take him there and she pays me a commission for every drink they slept down. Mate, I make more off of that than my salary. And Kai is that good of a teacher? He's one righteous mate. In the beginning I'm majorly stressed, but he made me walk around the whole island and substitute for him as a tourist guide. Then I wigged out even more because he made me wax boards for two weeks. Wax on, wax off. And on top of it, he just laid there without moving a finger. I almost returned to California. Or Australia, that is. But then he started to teach me for real, and you gotta admit, the mate's better than the whole surfing university faculty put together. Plus, I realized he's no bum. He's just meditating. Let's talk about your motorboat again. Isn't that, like, totally rad? I think he used the motorboat to look for waves on the nearby islands. No, that was before. The guys in green told me they'll whip out their guns and shoot me if I use it. They must hate surfing so much that one of them says he wants to fly over the beach in a helicopter while I'm surfing. And use me for target practice. People are just totally wacko. What were we talking about before? I don't know, about surfing maybe? What's the meaning of those movements you were making before? Tai Chi, mate. Since I can't surf, I have to do something to keep in shape. It seems weird to me that you have a son. Koala? He is even weirder. I'm not sure whether he'll turn out to be a criminal or an artist. You look too young to have a son. I'm telling you, mate, it just happened once, kinda by chance. I met this hot, amazing, mythical babe who digs adventure sports and the red-hot chili peppers. We were kindred souls, but hers was in a bikini. The thing is, when Koala was born, she got the chance to climb Mount Everest on a tightrope. So of course she bailed. Then she did this round-the-world hard road bike tour, then some other expedition, then another. So, I guess she'll come back someday, but I try not to let it get to me. There's too much stuff to keep me busy, and freaking out is for nerds. Did you say your kid's name is Koala? No, mate. Actually, his name is... It's... Mike. Well, eventually I'll remember. I call him Koala because of this cartoon movie he's watched like ten bazillion times. One of the characters is this blue alien, but the kid kept yapping, Look at the koala! Since he saw one when he went to visit his grandparents that summer, it was koala this and koala that. So now, he's stuck with koala. <laughs>